Never had to wait in a line for a movie. That's not a big one, but Honey Boy, written, with starring Shia LaBeouf. He's got a line. All right, guys. Oh, <laughs> I got that. We're starstruck. All right, so thoughts, guys, on Honey Boy with a special appearance by uh, Shia LaBeouf. He yeah, actually showed up to our theater guy. And uh, Nico, get in this shot, boy. Get in this shot, little honey boy. So what do we think about this movie? It was good. It was, it was very, like... Relatable. 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 Relatable and cathartic. And, yeah. Yeah, it was sad. I just wanted to do a quick video because he did show up to our theater. So yeah, I'll do a review, I guess, shortly. What's going on, guys? We just came back from seeing Honey Boy, the brand new film written by Shia LaBeouf. Um, maybe I should ask you to pull it up on your phone on IMDb or something so I can look at the cast. Right. I do remember like Lucas Hedges, um, Jonah Jupe, I think, or Noah Jupe. <laughs> Noah Jupe was the kid actor. Uh, YK, what the fuck is the girl's name? FK Twigs. FK Twigs. FKW Twigs, yeah. right? Yeah. No. See, I'm not. I'm not with. I'm not hip with it. YG. <laughs> no, it's definitely not YG. <laughs> but we'll look up the cast. So just go to IMDb.com, look it up. But um, I wasn't recognizing the director too much, guys, and I didn't Alma. really even know this much of the story. Was her name was Alma, right? Alma yeah. Harel. Harel. Yeah, I believe she's uh, Israeli. Um, I didn't. Uh, it's getting a really, really good score though right now. Oh, by the way, I'm out here in New York visiting my dear brother right here. So we're doing this live from Queens right now, and um, <laughs> <laughs> you know we're on our last night right now uh, from visiting him. We're gonna leave tomorrow in the afternoon. So I was like, you know, let's just do a chill night, uh, go out, and uh, Honey Boy was was on the list, and I didn't know anything about this movie. Uh, did you see a trailer for it beforehand? I saw the trailer on yeah. YouTube a few times, like a few days ago, and it, okay. it looked really good. Yeah. It just kind of, yeah, did me and I wanted to watch it. Yeah, and I was even telling, um, and we, I was even joking because we went to the Museum of Movie and Image, and right there is where they, they you know, Shia LaBeouf filmed that um, He Will Not Divide Us you know, thing. So we were kind of like, it was ironic that we were talking about him on the same day that we actually yeah. saw him. Yeah. So what had happened, guys, after the film, he came in and did like a QA, and a a little interview about the movie. He was actually there. We couldn't believe it. And I'll put that video up, you know, in the next coming days after I edited the audio it was a little low and, and whatnot. But he was there doing a 20 minute, you know, talking. And um, it was awesome to see. It, it, we're still kind of star, starstruck about it. Yeah. Um, but it seemed like this was a very personal movie. And this was very relatable to us, too. Cathartic. Just, yeah, very cathartic. And um, the story in a nutshell is pretty much uh, focused on um, Shia LaBeouf's life from 1995 to... Was it 2000? 2015. 15, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty much young Shia, like even Stevens, like right when he was getting into the even Stevens world. Um, and it shows him doing a lot of stunt work and doing a lot of like these... Um, I guess movie of the weeks they called them like this kid yeah. kid things Disney kid channel yeah kid shit. projects yeah. Um, and then it, you know it flashes forward to uh, 2015 played by uh, jo um, Shia LaBeouf uh, is played by uh, Lucas Hedges which I think is a phenomenal actor I saw him in um, you might want to pull him up he I was in the movie. Uh, mid 90s he played the brother oh that's right he yeah. did a really he good job asshole in that. brother asshole brother he's also in another one that we saw um, with Russell Crowe I believe he was gay in his dad was trying to send him to like a, a camp to not be gay anymore boogie nights but is that what <laughs> <laughs> boogie nights. uh i don't know definitely what that not is. that one just uh, click on lucas hedges you'll, you'll see he's like the top it's, it's that kid oh, the that, third one. Oh, he looks different as i yeah photo. yeah he always has really short hair in the movies but his imdb photo has long hair yeah, it looks anyway like rupert grint yeah <laughs> so so we get him um and he's kind of like shia that's gone out of control um, you know, uh, he's had a lot of encounters with the law, so he's going through rehab. Boy Erased. Boy Erased is an amazing movie. Anyways, so um, Lucas Hedges, definitely got to watch for him if you guys don't already know about him. But anyways, um, so we get to focus on those two, uh, you know, young Shia and actual Shia. And Shia LaBeouf is playing his father in this movie. And that's where it gets yeah. a little, that's where it gets a little... Um, Strange to kind of differ, you know, him. Bizarro world. Yeah, for him to kind of differentiate from him from playing his his father. But when he gets into it, it was yeah. good. He, you, you see him as, it's almost like a, 
yeah, it almost seems like this is therapy and he's working through something and he's channeling his father. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It was pretty crazy to see. Yeah, and he talks about after the uh, after the movie when we actually got to see him and, and, uh, and talk, talk with him, not talk with him, but he talked to us. Um, you know, he said all that stuff was pretty much verbatim. Um, you know, I even ran it by the script by my by my dad, and, and you know, and yeah. he was fine with with it. You know, I think he said he may have changed a couple of scenarios, but for the most part, it was verbatim, other than the ending, what happened at the ending, I guess. Um, so it was cool to see him kind of unlock that because this shy is kind of he's always in the media spotlight as being a crazy nut, and he's kind of tried to ever. I think it was ever since Eagle Eye. And I was hearing all these conspiracy theories that for the movie Eagle Eye, you remember that one, right? Yeah. Where like you find out that the conspira- all these conspiracy yeah. theories are going on with the government watching it's him a, and whatnot. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. So I heard this. I don't know if it's a rumor, you know, itself, but that someone on the set was an actual government agent, like a retired actual. Oh, and they showed him that he, all his like conversations, all yeah. his sexy conversations. So he, well, we had an FBI consultant on the, on the picture telling me that they can use your ADT security box microphone to to get your stuff that's going on in your house or on star they could shut your car down and he told me that one in five phone calls that you make uh, are recorded and logged and i laughed at him and then he played back a phone conversation i'd had two years prior come on to joining the picture the fbi consultant and it was like one of those it was one of those phone calls was like you know what are you wearing type of things really <laughs> yeah so it was it was mad Can weird we, wait, but... so you mean they had a, a record of you from two years prior to me joining the picture even being associated with the movie with the movie well that seems it's creepy. extremely creepy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. He, he was showing uh, Shia LaBeouf all these insider secrets, and it got the wires, you know, the gears spinning in Shia LaBeouf's head about, you know, starting to think, uh, you know, against the government, I guess, uh, uh, conspiracy theories and whatnot. What the hell is this incoming call? Get it out of here. <laughs> um, so I think after that movie, he, he started... You know, started questioning a lot of things, started oh, acting yeah. out, and people, of course, you know, in the 21st century, captured all this shit on their phones, and just his life just became a circus. And it was hard for him after that to get in the Hollywood spotlight or even work with top name directors. Yeah. I heard he was very um, just difficult to deal with, and even talked about it after the movie, guys, tonight. So uh, Spike Lee. He was working on a Spike Lee movie that he got dropped from, right, or something? Yeah. Spike Lee joint. Got a Spike Lee joint. That would have been big Noint. for him. Yeah. <laughs> that was a stretch. But uh, that would have been big for him on his resume. But um, I thought this movie was fantastic. I had no gripes with it. It's a really high percentage right now, like 93% yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, same with Metacritic. I think it's really up there. <clears throat> but And then uh, Noah Jupe, the one that plays a younger Shia LaBeouf. What yeah. you think about Otis. Him? Otis. Otis, uh, yeah, in the movie. He was good. It... Um... Yeah, it's it's weird to see a little kid act grown up because it seems like he never really had a real childhood and he had to kind of be a father to his father. Yeah. And put his father in check and the yeah. roles were reversed too. Yeah, the far, roles, yeah. If financially, the roles were reversed, there's, you know, provided. no no spoilers, but he was there's a scene where he just lashes out, you know, young Otis and says, "You know what? I'm you know, I'm paying for you basically. You're my chaperone." Yeah. And that like tears his dad apart and gets yeah. him so upset because he can't handle the truth of that's the reason why he's ultimately around him you yeah. know and, it, and his dad if, yeah he said if I didn't pay you you wouldn't be here yeah and that really resonated and it was it was because you don't really see it especially from the kids actors actors side I mean I know this happens to a lot of kid actors um, they usually grow up to be pretty wild pretty yeah. wild people it's, it seems like they're acting <clears throat> out because they don't have that they have the funds to do it, but they don't. They're struggling with, um, yeah, not having a normal life. So mm-hmm. it seems like they're acting out. Yeah, a bit An- later in life. Another one. Do you still have your phone up? Uh, uh, yeah. The IMDb. There was another actor in there. Um, you know, I looked over to my girlfriend. and I was like, I know that. I know that guy. Um, he was the one that played Tom, who was like kind of like the father figure uh, to oh, to yeah, Otis. Yeah. Uh, he had a small a small role in it, but. Um, We've seen him in a lot of movies as well. Clifton Collins Jr. I think he's a really, really good actor. I would have liked to see him a little more in this movie, but he does have a scene um, with Shia LaBeouf and uh, and Noah, J- Noah Jupe that was really, really, really good. And uh, like I said, I just would have liked to see him a little more in this movie because I- I've seen him in other things, and I think he's a-, a great actor. I think I saw him in The Mule last with the... Yeah. Um, 
Clint Eastwood. So it's like little he has like little roles here here and there, but for the most part, this movie was phenomenal. And it only take it only took place in like on the on the actual Hollywood set where he was filming the movie, and then back at the hotel, just back yeah. and forth in the rehab facility. Yeah, so it was like three locations that seemed like he was kind of bouncing back to and fro. Um, yeah, yeah, it was. It was almost like there was very like kind of dream sequency scenes. Yeah, it's almost like David Lynchian in a sense where yeah, it seems like he's working. This whole movie is him just working through uh, processing getting, that trauma, and it was getting over pretty it. traumatic. His life, yeah, getting, yeah, and especially the rehab scenes. You know, there's you know the group therapy that you get to see. There's um, you know he doesn't want to be there. Otis, grown up Otis, does not want to be there at all. He thinks you know um, it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. You know, he finds he finally you know relieves some of his stress and he starts to uh, starts to cope with reality a little more. And he's like, you know, I'm an actor. Like I know, you know, this is all just acting. Like I know, you know, that what you're telling me is bullshit. And it was really cool to see that he was that he was embracing it, but also he knew like that, like yes. not completely 100 percent to give himself into this. I feel like yeah, there was definitely a wall built up. Yeah, that he that he was trying to break down. But Martin was, Starr was in there too. Oh yeah, Martin Starry, yeah, Freaks and Geeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, is it was it um, Knocked Up? I think he was in there. Yeah, yeah. He got pink eye. Or, was that when he got pink eye, or was that another movie? I, I don't know, but he I, had the. No, no. I think that they, was. Yeah, they, they, they all pink eye. Shave the beard or something like that. Yeah, and they kept. <laughs> they looked like he had a vagina on his face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's like, "Come on, guys, you can't keep yeah. talking." <laughs> that guy's super funny. Yeah, that guy was is, was really he was really good in this movie too. He had yeah. a small role, but um. Yeah, I overall thought this movie was great, guys. Definitely think you guys should check it out. It premiered at Sundance, I believe they said last month? Was it last month or a couple months? No, it might have been in summer. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, June, I think it was. June or July. I didn't and... know he'd been riding this for a while, though. Yeah. He wrote this in rehab. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, usually when you when you come back to movies like this, you've been writing for it for a while, just like they did with, like, Seth Rogen did with Superbad. He came back to it, you know, years later, decades later. Yeah. But I'm glad he finally put it out. And um, even though it's, it focuses on like you know a chunk from '95 to 2015, he's an interesting guy. And I didn't know that his dad was who he was. And um, you know, abusive father, uh, you know, drug Megal megalomaniac. Um, what is that? Megalomaniac. What is is that? that a word? I don't, what is that? <laughs> uh, narcissistic. Just yeah. up, super obsessed with itself, and mm-hmm. that doesn't take the blame for anything. There's there's a lot of scenes where the dad starts ar- uh, fighting with <laughs> some of the other hotel you know attendant uh, people that are staying at the hotel. You know, it's it's like pretty much like a brothel, man. It's like they have prostitutes going in and out. So he'll argue <laughs> with. Sorry. Thank you. So he'll argue with them, you know, that just cloud, baby. All, all the time, and just uh, it, it seemed really genuine. And there's yeah. also the, the you know the guest appearance from uh, F- FK Twigs. F what is it? FKA Twigs. Oh, AKA. I don't know why I want to see W. Album just dropped two days ago. Listen to it. Yeah, her album just dropped. Yeah, yeah. That's a hit. So um, she was in this movie. She reminded me of uh, all I could say is Zoe Kravitz. Uh, that's all I can compare. She had that look oh, to yeah. Zoe Kravitz. I don't know her from anything else, guys. But um, I thought she was okay from from what I saw. She was kind of like um, um, almost a mother, cl- like a motherly figure, figure like yeah. a, like an older sister figure. It got a little ooh, I didn't know kind of weird. Ha- it got, yeah. I didn't know what was gonna happen from it because Hollywood likes to throw these little young kids into sexual scenes nowadays. But it didn't go there, and it I pre- very motherly. Yeah, I, I appreciated that. It was more of a mother figure, and um, she looked out for him, and it kind of balanced. It kind of balanced because he, all he knew was chaos. All he had was chaos in his world. And he was acting, and then he would go home to his abusive father, and his abusive father would be on set sometimes, yelling at the cast and crew. So it, that was cool to see. Like it seemed yeah. very genuine. Yeah, it seemed like he, he. I'm gonna say it again, but yeah, he it, he really like wears his his like heart on his sleeve, pretty much. And Otis or or Shia LaBeouf. Just Shia or? in general. Yeah. It seems like he's very like an honest person. He just kind of wears. It. His yeah, hard on his sleeves, and even tonight, like talking on the microphone, he had his head down. Yeah, he seemed kind very, of uh, contemplative and like sort of like not meek, but just very like it's very vulnerable. Yeah, talking like having your life on display, yeah. and then being judged by an audience. And then even the guy interviewing him, um, he was like, "Well, you had a you know great response and blah yeah. blah blah, and everybody here loved it." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm optimistic, but I had the the you know the rug pulled." From yeah. underneath me before, probably with Transformers and all a couple of the other ones that came out later than that, because yeah. he had some big hits. But at the same time, I'm sure he knows how cruel Hollywood can be. They were so cruel to him when he was doing a lot of his art display stuff, and it's yeah. the world doesn't get that. That's the thing. When you become a Hollywood star, in my mind, 
you when you become a Hollywood yeah. star and you want to balance that with with art and trying to be artistic or trying to just have a different outlet. have a different outlet or view on things, yeah. m- the general public is not gonna yeah. understand it. It's yeah. not. It's a very niche of who's gonna understand it. I think for the most part, people love his craft, his art, and yeah. they're glad he's back in cinema doing these movies. And even if they're independent movies, I would love to see him, oh, you know, in a major yeah. major role soon. You know, I think he did um, the Peanut Butter. Peanut Butter Falcon. Falcon, which is another one I wanted to catch, but it's independent. So I think I got to go to AMC for that or something. But um, yeah, I liked it. I think on an overall grade scale, I'm going to give this one a solid, probably like a 4.5 out of 5. Out of 5? It's, it's, yeah. it's up there for me as far as, I didn't really have too many gripes with it. Other than I would have wanted to see Clifton uh, Curtis a little more. They could expand it a little more on that. The movie, I think it was only an hour and a half, right? Yeah, hour could, 35. It, it could have went a little longer. I, I mean, think it could have went a little bit longer. And I would have enjoyed it. Still. Yeah, I would enjoy it. I'm going to give it a five. I thought five it was great. Five. It was, yeah, very vulnerable. Yeah. Yeah, which is, is good to see. Yeah. I think so. Okay, cool. So definitely, guys, if you guys get a chance, check out Honey Boy coming to a city near you, hopefully. And it's an Amazon original, so most likely it'll be on Amazon by like next month, something like that. And, uh, hey, check out my brother's podcast. He's now on Spotify, and he is interpreting your dreams in, uh, what's it called again? The Dream Shatter? The Dream Shatter? It's called uh, Dream Paradigm. Uh, it's, called, <laughs> it's called Only in Dreams, and you send me your dreams, and I interpret them. It's called The Nightmare on Elm Street, Dream, yeah. Dream Warrior 5. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. Follow him on Instagram. I'll put the Instagram up yeah. uh, right here all over his face. I'll just put it right there as well as the Spotify down below, guys, in the bio. So thank you guys so much. If you guys did appreciate this review, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe for more content like this. And if you guys did catch Honey Boy, leave comments on what you thought of it. All right, guys. Till next time, I'm gone. Deuces.